InDesign is the professional layout application for print and digital publishing. Whether designing for print, tablet devices, ebook, or PDF, InDesign allows you to design pixel perfect designs and typography with a rich set of tools. So let's take a look at some of the new features in this new version of InDesign CC. The first thing you'll notice is, well, I've just launched InDesign, and of course we normally would go in at this point and create a new document. But there's a new twist to this. If I go up to File and say New Document, I now have a preview option. So if the preview's off, I wouldn't see what I'm doing in the background, but with it on, now if I make changes to, let's say I want to go from print to maybe digital publishing, I will now see a preview of what that document looks like that I'm building in the background. So if I want to go ahead and make it my own custom uh, size here, 300 pixels by, let's say, 400 pixels, it will instantly update and show me what I'm doing in the background. So that's awesome. Now the other thing you'll notice is that InDesign's gotten a lot darker. It's got a brand new dark UI. And this is actually one of the new enhancements to not only the user interface, but really what's going on under the hood. InDesign has been completely rewritten in this version to be not only 64-bit enabled on both Mac and Windows, but also high DPI, or what it's commonly referred to as retina display support. Uh, if you have a uh, one of the newer Macs, for example, with a retina display, uh, InDesign CC now takes advantage of that. So let's go in. I'm going to go ahead and close this blank document. And we're going to go ahead and open up one of my recents here. I've got a recent document open. And the first thing we'll notice is there's a font missing. Well, at this point, you would normally do your fine font. And you would go in and perhaps you know either replace it or install the font that's missing. And of course, we could do a search. And I'm going to replace it with a slightly different version of that font. And we'll do our change all. Now that's been done, but let's talk about fonts in general. If we scroll down, we've got uh, some text here. I'm just going to go ahead and highlight that text. And you'll notice that under my control panel and also on my character palette, the font menu has been altered a little bit. First of all, I can go in and search for a specific font. So if I like that Warnock Pro font, I can not only search for just Warnock and see both versions of it, but as I, you know, mount, or not mouse down, but arrow down or up and down over these, it will also show me a preview of what that font choice would look like. Now, not only can I search for fonts by name, but I can also search by the style. So if I say, show me all my bold fonts, I can quickly go through and figure out which font looks best as a bold for that type that I've got selected. And although I'm arrowing through, through these, I'm not actually making any changes to the type. If I escape out, the type goes back to the font that it was set on. Now I can also have the ability to go in and not only search by name and by style, but if we just pull up the font menu, you'll notice that now the fonts are grouped together by their characteristics. So for example, let's use good old fashioned Arial here. We can twirl Arial down and see that we have Arial regular, italic, bold, and bold italic. And once again, just using the arrow keys on my keyboard, going up and down, I can see what that font would look like. You also notice that there are stars next to each font, some of which I have enabled with the uh, black star, and the rest are unchecked or not starred. So if I find a font that I like, uh, let's say Adobe Garamond Pro, I can star it by just clicking a little star there. And what that does is that sets it as a favorite. So now I can say, show me just my favorite fonts. And that will show me just my favorite fonts that I can again quickly and easily arrow through to see if I like uh, the selection in any one of those fonts. You'll also notice something else. Let's uncheck the favorites for a moment. You'll notice that we have the complete font list of everything that we have installed. And then as we go up in the list, we see our most recently used fonts and our most recently used favorites. So this is a way of quickly letting the user, without having to scroll through a list, get to the same fonts that they use over and over and over again without, again, having to scroll through the entire list to get to those. So now you've got several ways to take advantage of your fonts inside uh, InDesign CC. All right, we'll escape out of that for a moment, and let's go ahead and scroll up. Now, we've seen these codes out and about, I'm sure, as you, as you travel around. These codes, or these barcodes as they're uh, sometimes referred to, are actually called QR codes. 
And now InDesign has the ability to make QR codes built right in. So for example, uh, this one goes to a website called pluralistoutdoordemo.com. And if I go ahead and click on that, I can delete that QR code out of its frame because InDesign CC now has the ability to build QR codes right inside the application. So you just select any frame because these are graphic objects, so just any frame. And now we have the ability under the object menu to simply say generate QR code, or we can simply right click on the frame and choose generate QR code. And at this point, we can generate a QR code from plain text, from a web hyperlink, using a text message that will, you can actually pre-compose what the message will be and what number it's going to go to. An email, again, you can set the email address that it's going to, the subject and the message. And of course, when someone scans either the text message or the email, they'll be able to send that email from their email address. And this is used a lot, for example, just in getting feedback from your customers or entering contests or those things, uh, those kinds of things. Also with business card, you can enter the information for your card so that when someone scans it, it will show up as a potential contact that they can add to their devices. So pretty cool that we can do all this. So again, we can go to uh, web hyperlink. We can put in that uh, demo URL, or we could just say, you know, www.creativecloud.com. Click OK. And before we click OK, there's one more thing. Let's go to the color. And it will default to a black QR code, but since we're kind of putting this in an existing spot where we've got some white type under it, let's go ahead and set our uh, color to the same white or paper color that we've used for the rest. So we'll click OK, and that generates a scannable QR code. Now that QR code is also vector-based, so you can copy and paste that into Illustrator and access the actual individual pieces. You can also apply effects to this because this is a vector object inside InDesign. So if you want to put a drop shadow behind it or some other glow or some other effect to kind of make it stand out, you're more than welcome to do that. So very cool to be able to do this. Last but not least, Let's head over to a different document I've got here, the travel guide. And this particular document was set up to be more like an ebook. So we've got um, facing pages, we've got a table of contents, we've got um, graphically rich, basically nice graphically rich document here that we can set up. And we're going to go through and go to the end here just to take a look at it. And now if I wanted to export this out as an EPUB, I can easily do this. I can go to my file menu, choose export. And of course, EPUB is one of the choices as it has been now for a couple of versions. But what's new in InDesign CC is that this particular EPUB that I export out will take better advantage of the InDesign table of contents that was built into it, and more importantly, better um, support for the built-in InDesign index. So let's go ahead and export this out. Uh, we'll export it to the desktop. We'll probably replace the one that's already there. And because I've told it to view it after exporting, it will go ahead and do the export and launch it in Adobe Digital Editions so I can preview it right here on my desktop. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose a smaller font for this. That way we can see it. The hyperlinks are there, which will jump to any story that we have, as well as, here we'll spread that out a little bit. There we go. Uh, that's the thing about eBooks, they do reflow. So we'll spread that out. And now if we go to the end where we've got that index, We've now got the same index that we built in InDesign that we can jump to a particular page and see exactly where that word is on the page or go to that topic that we indexed in InDesign. So dark UI, 64-bit support, QR codes, EPUB enhancements are just a few of the new features included in InDesign CC, which is only available in Creative Cloud.